So we've already seen a few different heuristics. We talked about this idea of a simulated annealing sort of approach. And with simulated annealing, what we were using sort of as our inspiration was metallurgy. This entire idea, let me get that second L in there. The entire idea is again, as metal is heating up, the molecules are moving all about. And then as we start to reduce the temperature by plunging it into water, those molecules that are bouncing around almost like configurations are solidifying themselves. And well, that's allowing us to now have sort of a hopefully best case uh, local maxima, but, or hopefully the global. Uh, the other approach that we talked about was this idea of a genetic algorithm. And the entire idea here was this was inspired by evolution, you know, survival of the fittest. Our configurations are based on sort of the implementations of our forefathers and mothers and survival of the fittest was kicking in because at some point, hopefully we reach a uh, pinnacle. And so the last one that we're going to look at is something known as ant colony optimization. Again, what we're looking at is this idea of biologically inspired algorithms. Algorithms. Ithms. Because, you know, we see that this is how something in nature or something in science operates and we're just saying well can we take that same similar behavior and use it as a a problem solving approach because again something has used this to solve problems so can we do it as well and that's where again we look at this idea of ants the entire purpose of an ant i'm working off of a grid structure just because it makes my life easier is that it's going to be traversing its environment in search for food right? Oh, I found food. So what I need to do now is I need to go back to my colony with this food. Ta-da. But that's not just it. Obviously, they're not just working off of a straight line. There, there might be uh, nooks and crannies in a maze. And secondly, it's not just I bring the food back. It's also I tell all of my ant buddies. And that's where we sort of look at this idea of it being a multi-agent search. The entire idea is that those ants are going all about the environment to hopefully find food sources. And as they do, they make sure to tell their sort of ant buddies again. So to at least start with that, again, when we're looking at it from sort of some kind of larger environment sake, you know, when we're dealing with one possible route, perfectly fine. You know, again, the ant sees, oh, this is the only way I go to it. But more importantly, what we're looking at is this idea of which do I take when I have a fork in the road? Should I go left? Should I go right? Or should I go left? Should I go right? The entire idea here is we actually start to introduce a little bit of the math equation, and I'll walk you through it as well. What we're looking at here with this fancy uh, symbol is this is something known as eta. And for the purpose of eta, what we are looking at is, again, this idea of attractiveness to a particular move. Now, the xy is just sort of, in our case, referring to what position or what tile that we want to go to. So if this was uh, p1 and this was p2, then what I'd be looking for was the eta of p1 and the eta, eta of p2. And so, okay, we just established, here's a number, here's what we're looking at. What does attractiveness sort of boil down to? Well, that's where, we're, again, we're sort of looking at it from the how much further am I working off of? So if I'm kind of drawing out my Manhattan distance lines, right? Again, Ada is just saying how much further. How much further am I to my goal? Now, we'll see sort of that's not the only thing that we work off of in this heuristic, but it at least helps build sort of our stepping stones. Because the second thing that we need to worry about is something known as the trail level. So we just talked about, again, uh, eta. So again, this idea, eta. This idea of how far we have to go. And then we also have new kind of design, tau. 
And the entire idea with Tau, uh, let's see, the best way to describe Tau, or uh, how many ants have taken this path. Because again, if we're looking at ants and behaving like ants for a moment, you know, we'll see sort of pheromones a little later, but they're pooping out pheromones or you know, they're depositing pheromones onto the ground. And so an ant, it, it's looking at the ground, it, it's seeing that the pheromones are there and it's like, oh, well, I know that, you know, my uh, colleagues or a uh, prior generation of ants have gone this route, I'm going to go this route. And so that's just sort of what these two things are coming into. So again, uh, Tau is referring to number of previous ants, and Ada is referring to how much further. Now to just kind of walk through this a little bit more and just to kind of get a little bit better understanding of ant colony optimization, again, as we're starting to look at this, we'll see that the ant sort of picks one of those routes and is again still kind of making its way to the food source. The ant in this case found the pathway. So this is a valid path to our goal. But this is also technically a valid path. You know, again, we see that this route gets me to my food. So it's also valid. So very similar to what we saw with A star. There's multiple ways I could get from RDU to Seattle. And so one other little thing that we could work off of is the fact that you may have some limitation of how many steps your ant could do. And, you know, again, in this situation, maybe uh, going this far and the ant still hasn't found food, we just go ahead and say, you know, that was an invalid path or that path doesn't work out that well. The ant died that way. So no other sort of uh, pheromones are being dropped. And again, we just never take that path either way. What happens is as we, uh, as our ant finds the food, it takes the food, it does a fancy little animation. Look at that, that's, that's the quality that you get in this, uh, in this video. But my point being is as it was doing that, it was depositing pheromones along the way. I found a good source. So I'm gonna let you know as I go back home, this was a good source. And for our sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know, we're gonna make our trail level something super easy. Just a simple one. I dropped one pheromone on the ground. That just makes you know life a little easier for us. But again, we're talking about more than one ant. I, I'm only working off of one ant, but what if all the ants are dropping one pheromone as well? Well, in that case, we may see that you know on this four, first tile here, right? This one, every ant had to traverse, so it's obviously gonna get in our case, all five ants pheromones. But again, let's say that three went north and three, uh, two went south. Oh, well, you can see pheromones are being deposited in a different amount here. One thing to take note of with this is you could have these pheromone levels be anything you want them to be. There are certain sort of, you know, recommendations that you can work off of, but, uh, you know, they just are, you know, whatever we want. Again, I could have, uh, 20 ants and they're all depositing one fifth of a pheromone and that's just giving me another number that's the important thing this is just a number and so is just this so again for our sake just going to work off of one because it makes everyone's lives easier so again what we're looking at is this fact that yes i do want to have uh you know the pheromone levels but specifically, I want to be able to identify something about exploration, right? Maybe this food source dies off. For whatever reason, that food source is, uh, has been expended because, again, it's a finite resource. But maybe there is another food source right here, food. And so again, we would want to, even though this took a longer route uh, for say this path to get to this food, it still may be a valid one later on for whatever reason. So we still want to have the ability that even though this is our shortest path, right? Maybe it's not over here, but maybe if you were to take, uh, let's see, 
if you were to take this route right here where uh, my head is apparently in the way, right, that would be where the food source, the next food source is. So how do we take all of this? Again, how do I take my tau? How do I take my eta, right? X of y. How do I do all this? How, you know, how? And that's where I will warn you. It's a lot of numbers and it's a lot of formulas, but we're going to work our way through that. Here is the formula. In essence, what we're looking at is we're going to select a probability of moving to a specific direction. So this path one is going to have some probability. So probability of path one, the probability of taking path two. That's all this symbol right here is looking at is given this ant. So this ant, this path. Right, that's all that's kind of working off of, and there, there's the you know better picture of that. But you see that we've already sort of built these points out. I've introduced them. So again, we're looking at tau. Tau is saying how many ants came before us, and eta. Eta is also just saying what, how close are we to the kind of end goal. So again, we're just sort of taking and working off of these two things. So again, the next little piece here you can sort of see going on is some sigma. The sigma is again just a sum summation. What we mean by that is what we're dealing with is given a particular route. So let's say P1 again. This is all for P1. Then that's divided. So P1 is divided by sort of the routes of P1 and P2. So, okay, we're just starting to flesh this out a little bit more, and you can see I have sort of a, an explanation here. How do I bring these values? How do I make these numbers? Tell me how to make these numbers. Well, super simple, we're gonna work off of here is just the inverse of the distance. So the distance is, in this case, uh, oh, well, before we jump to that, uh, just a little see these uh, because I didn't show them before. Alpha and beta, these are mostly just letting us have some kind of flexibility. If they are both equal to one, we're just saying that uh, the trail level and the pheromone or the attractive le the trail level, the pheromones, and the attractiveness or how much further, they're equal. But I could make one go higher or lower than the other, and so I could add a little more weight uh, to them. That's all those are saying. For our sake, we're just going to act like they don't exist. Why did you even bring them up if you weren't going to look at them, right? But that just sort of helps kind of convey what we're doing here. So again, if I'm looking at this right now, all I see is that I'm working off of a trail level of a one. Right, I'm just arbitrarily saying that that's all that these are in our case. Okay, right, we've taken sort of that first step, but I still haven't worked off of sort of the eta, right? The what's the distance? How much further? How do I, you know, how do I translate that into a number? Again, we're just looking at this from the calculation of the inverse of the distance, because at the end of the day, if you think about this. It's no different than just working off of a grid, right? A graph structure. I don't have to have all those tiles. This is now just some edge moving to another node, right? And so what we're going to do is if this had a weight, if this had a weight of 10, we're going to say that we, it has the inverse, so 1 tenth. Now, same kind of concepts going on there. I'm going to work off of that second path and say that it had, that's my P2, that's my P1, P1. And what's the probability of taking P1? Again, what we're doing here is why we take the inverse is specifically we want to promote the lowest cost. Again, thinking about this like it's a shortest path problem. I want sort of, if we look at sort of 10 and 14 by themselves, right? I want the bigger of the number, but the problem is the bigger of the number is the 14. By taking the inverse of these problems, suddenly my one tenth is the bigger of the number. And that's sort of 
how we are able to get shortest path. Ta-da! Now, again, as I plug this in, luckily, uh, this is where sort of at the start, this is super easy. So one times one tenth is just one tenth. One times one tenth, just one tenth. One times one fourteenth, just one fourteenth. I take this. I plug this into my calculator or my program, or I do this math by hand, and I'm going to get one tenth, again, one tenth over one tenth plus one fourteenth, or in this case, uh, 0.17143. I try, I, you know, I cut it off for the sake of, you know, visibility, but you can notice what that's going to give me is 0.58 or what we're saying here is that the probability, probability of going to path one is 58%, 58%. That's it. And you know we can do the exact same thing on the opposite end. So rather than it being uh, the one tenth on the top, if I'm looking at this now from what's the probability that this ant is gonna go to P2, well, again, one times anything is just going to be whatever that thing is. So this just becomes 1 14th over 1 10th plus 1 14th. And that's what we're going to see. Again, we take that 1 14th and that 1 10th plus 1 14th. And that's going to spit out 0 0.41 or roughly speaking, what we're saying is 42%. And you may be thinking, oh, you know, of course, I could have just done the first one minus, the, you know, 58. Oh, well, well, it's one minus 0.58 and we're done. But what happens if we were dealing with three possible pathways or even four possible pathways, right? This bottom calculation, right, is still this path over the sum of all the paths there. This one is that path over the sum of all possible paths. This one is the sum of all possible paths. And so again, this is just allowing me to see what kind of frame or uh, what's the uh, proportion of this being the good path uh, in relation to all the others. And so we look at this and the same thing that we saw with our our, our simulated annealing in our genetic algorithms, we roll some random number. We are controlling random. And if that random number, if we said something like 0.25, if that's less than our 0.58, congratulations, go the top way. If, however, it's above that, that's no longer the case, that's too big, well, that was a false statement, go to the next one or consider which uh, pathway you end up taking. Okay, so there you go. But we have one other issue because as I take these, these numbers are just gonna get bigger and these numbers are just gonna get bigger and these numbers are just gonna get bigger. So the last thing that we have to deal with is also something about those pheromones. And specifically, we have something known as if evaporation pheromone evaporation as sort of pheromones are just sort of chemicals laced on the ground well air is slowly getting rid of them and as a result we need to account for that because again bad paths start getting taken less and we want to start to erase those pathways from our place so how we deal with this is again we've got a bunch of stuff going on here but specifically what we're looking at is when we're working off of sort of our first approach how do we want to initialize the pheromone level so again if you think about it what's the old tau again tau is just talking about trail level well that means if no ant has touched this place it's a zero and zero times anything is just zero and we'll get to this don't worry we'll get to what this is in a bit and so we take that and we multiply it by some initial uh value or you just set it as one either one works but then we get into updating our search and now i'll start to break this down because 
Now, tau may be, tau old may be one. And so I need to know what this is. Well, as you can sort of see, this value, if this is where, well, you're gonna hate uh, Greek letters. This is rho. It looks like a P, rho. Good way to think about this is, again, it's just the pheromone evaporation coefficient. It's some value. What percent of, uh, let me, what percent of pheromone evaporates? Again, we're just saying, all right, there's pheromones on the ground. I need to have them slowly you know go away how much do we evaporate at each sort of cycle in our search so again rho or i'm just going to call it p because it's just it looks like a p right all that is is just telling me in proportion so if i said that the evaporation rate right was a 0 0.5 or five percent then what's left over is 95 percent of whatever my old tau was old all right so 95 percent of the old tau is left up and then we get this another sigma oh all right well again sigma just means summation so we just play this out a little bit more and specifically that sigma is looking at delta tau but what it's actually really asking is how much pheromone was deposited in this round. So how much was just deposited? That's it. And we take all of the, that amount, uh, as you can sort of see here, by M referring to number of ants and K referring to this ant or this given ant so given all of our ants how much uh pheromone was being dropped by them so how do i calculate this well guess what it's more math what we're looking at is this is where we officially say how much pheromone one ant drops that's all Q is. Q is that constant value assigning, again, how much we're working off of. And then we do kind of work off of a cost of path as well. So how much pheromone was it dropping along the pathway? Uh, but again, that's just sort of our kind of, that's how we do it. That's, that's in a nutshell, kind of what we're working off of. So again, just playing that out a little bit more. Again, Q some constant working off of how much pheromone the ant does. Length of the LK is just what's the length of the path taken by this ant at this time. So again, I've gotten to the goal. What was the length it took? So if we're looking at this, I have two possible routes. I have a P1 and I have a P2. What are the new pheromone values after my search? Now, this is where, you know, I have to sort of fake some randomness and say, let's arbitrarily say one ant went up to the top and one ant went to the bottom, just for our sake, you know, to simplify things. Rho or P, again, the evaporation, we're going to say is 5%, and one ant drops one pheromone on the ground. Okay, well, again, we're working off of tau old. So again, this is just tau, that's tau of of the top path or i'm calling it p1 well let me let me correct and sort of follow along with what i'm doing here so this is again just our tau of old for our path top so there that's all again if you see i just said that that's a one that's all so i plugged in that value then i took my row or p and said that i'm going to have five percent uh being evaporated or 95 percent is being kept from the last kind of iteration so in this first little chunk here right 
I would end up with a 0.95. Then I'm adding in how much pheromone. So this is the sigma of the delta of the, it was of, what's the symbol again? Yeah, tau, tau. Uh, the tau of this path. So again, this is just saying, well, I had one ant, so Q of one over the path. So again, you know, in this case, 0.95 plus 0.1 is going to give us a new trail level of 1.05. Okay, well, guess what? You do the exact same thing. So again, tau old, uh, we get the same Q, but again, the pathway is much further this time. Again, remember this is LK or distance. So again, oh, well, you know, one path. So 95% uh, is still kind of being carried over. I, that's like a 0.07. I'm not going to draw it out. But you can see, oh, well, the pheromones on this pathway, it's no longer a 50-50 shot. It's a 1.05 versus a 1.02. Not a major difference, but again, we're only working off of an M of two amps. What happens? If I expand it, now my M is so much more. It's eight ants. And specifically, I'm saying that five ants are taking the top, three ants are taking the bottom. Okay, well, again, this portion right here does not change. It's, again, just the evaporation. How much, how much pheromone stays again it's just 95 percent so uh we do that same song and dance again that works but notice again we had more ants so the sum of this q again over the path this is more more ants went the top route versus the three ants less went here and if you plug in this calculation, and you can see it, uh, I would get now a trail level of a 1.45 versus a 1.164. Again, these trail levels are just telling me how many ants came here before me, and that's in our way sort of telling us uh, which path is going to be sort of the more attractive of those paths. So again, we're not working too terribly much off of this idea of probability, but just so you can sort of see this and walk through it a little bit more, those numbers, those tau's that we just calculated out are used in the next iteration. And so I do the same song and dance. Now, probability does have to kick in. So with P1, right, the probability, the probability of P1 becomes 1.45 over 1 tenth, 1.45 times 1 tenth plus 1.16, 1 14th. And you spit that out, and I'm not going to do that. You, by all means, you know, take a second to calculate that out for a moment. And that's, you know, just to give you the warning, you know, that's that's the type of question that you might see on a quiz or an exam type of thing. But again, there's a, pop, a probability of going to the top. There's a probability of going to the bottom. You do this same song and dance, and you generate sort of which ants go where. For my sake, because it just makes my life easier, I'll just say instead of five, now six ants, because it had a higher probability. So, oh, well, six ants went this way, uh, and only two ants went the bottom way. Well, again, notice we're just updating the pheromone levels. Instead of this being a one, instead of the old tau being a one, it's whatever that path was. So, again, this is my tau of top. This is my tau of bottom. So again, that 1.45, I want to take 95% of that 1.45, and whatever that turns out to be, I move on. Uh, and I do the same thing with my bottom. So one, you know, 95% of uh, 1.164 gets carried over, plus, again, how many ants took this pathway this time. And as you can start to see, again, 
as more ants are taking that top route, uh, that pheromone level, that or sorry, that tau level, that trail level is getting much bigger because again, we're saying that more ants are taking this route, more pheromones are being deposited on this route, and guess what? We take these values, the 1.97 and the 1.24, and we plug those in. And so we get again, so our tau of P1 or top and our tau of bottom, just to correct myself here, it's top now. So again, same thing. What gets carried over? 95% of that. What gets carried over on the bottom one? 95% of that. How many ants were this way? Well, again, to make my life easier, seven ants went this time. Only one ant went this time. And you can see that we continue to go over and over as we make these new iterations or these new steps in the ant colony search, one pathway is starting to become heavy with pheromones and because of that this bottom pathway you're going to see has much less probability each time versus this top path so just to plug it in right just so we can all see this so two seven times one tenth two point five nine seven one tenth plus uh, 1.258 times 1 14th. I'm blatantly going to cheat and pull out my calculator because I'm not doing that math by hand. Uh, let's see, 2.579 times uh, 1 tenth. I know that that one's an easy one, but you know, brain. So we're dealing with uh, 2579. So there we are, 0 0.2579 over, mm -mm -mm -mm. let me not eat that, times 1.258 uh, times 1 over 14. That's going to generate a 34.75. Thirty-four seventy. Five. And if we calculated that out, so again, oh, oh, there we are, 0 0.2, 0 0.2579 divided by 0 0.3475, the probability of taking the top route is now 0 0.7421. 0 0.7421. Or... 74.2 percent and yeah guess what you do the same song and dance on the bottom here so this becomes uh rather than it being uh it would still be the bottom of 34.75 but just to calculate out that bottom one again let's see that uh let's see that's 1.2858 times 1 over 14 so 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.0898, 0 0.0899, again, it's rounding up uh, if you're looking at that number. We take that number, oh, divided by that 0 0.3475, and what we should see is 2585. Uh, Eight, so that is 0 0.2586, or roughly speaking, 25.8%. What do you know? We add this up, we do the song and dance, and the probability is coming out to 100% again. And so again, we're just seeing that top path Right, this top path has higher probability as we work through it, and the bottom path is starting to slowly, slowly kind of become less probable. And as this happens, as you can see, we eventually are starting to settle that this is the better pathway. But again, I only worked off of five ants, so here's my cultural relevance meme of the year. What if I used eight million ants?